friends, in this session, we are going to discuss about the plant diseases, where you will know the name of the host plant and the pathogen which is causing the disease in the plant, what are the symptoms of identification, the remedial measures or the control measures. And also, we will learn about some of the diseases which are due to deficiency of specific minerals. Diseases are caused by pathogens which are either fungi, bacteria or viruses in the plants. These pathogens are present in and are being transmitted through soil, water or air. And to study the diseases, what are the things which we require in the laboratory? We require the plant specimens which are infected with a bacterial or a fungal or a viral disease, a hand lens, a dissection microscope, compound microscope, glass slides, cover slips and a watch glass or a beaker with water. So, these are our requirements to study the plant diseases. With the help of these things, we can study the bacterial and fungal diseases. Whereas, if you want to study the viral diseases, viruses you know they are ultra microscopic and cannot be seen with the help of these microscopes. And in case of these diseases, we are going to learn only the symptoms of identification and how they can be controlled or what are the remedial measures. So, let us start with the Tikka disease in groundnut. The host plant is groundnut, it is economically important. The disease is caused by a fungus, its name is Cercospora personata. It grows both inside as well as outside the host and the aerial portions of the plant body are being affected. The symptoms appear first on the lower leaflets as dark spots, which at a later stage are surrounded by a yellow ring. The mature spots are dark brown to black in color and because of the infection, there will be no development of nuts in the fruit, there will be premature leaf fall. So, naturally the yield is going to be decreased. So, the control or the remedial measures are burning of the previous crop residue, crop rotation, treatment of the seed before sowing with disinfectants like therum, flate, agrozone. These are the local names or spray of the crop with fungicides compounds like Dithane Z78 or cuprovate or Bodox mixture using linseed oil as a sticker. The next disease is rust disease in weight. Again, this is a fungal disease caused by Paxinia. You have three types of rust diseases in the wheat plant. One is known as black rust. It is caused by Paxinia triticina and the brown rust is caused by Paxinia recondita, whereas the yellow rust is caused by Paxinia styriformis. The leaf and the stem are infected and as you know, the leaf is the one where photosynthesis takes place or the site for photosynthesis decreases or to say there will be decrease in the yield of the plant. So, the remedial measures are use of disease resistant varieties and use of fungicides like triazo. The other disease is white rust in mustard. Here we have a specimen of the mustard plant infected by the white rust. Again, this is a fungal disease caused by albugo. It is an endoparasite, infects the aerial parts of the plant, especially the leaf. And on the leaf, on the lower side, you can see the white blisters. And on the upper surface, you can see swellings or galls. And the infection leads to loss of the yield. The remedial measures are remove and destroy the infected plants or spray with fungicide or something like rosemary oil or azadirachtin compounds or mefenoxam. For studying the pathogen which is causing the disease, the characters of the pathogen, you select a spot 
where you can clearly see the pathogen first with the help of a hand lens or with the help of a dissection microscope. Select the right spot where you can see the spores or the hypha with the help of a needle or a blade or a scalpel, scrape off the infected area where the symptoms are clearly visible. Hold the needle in your hand, take a glass slide, place a drop of water with the help of a dropper or with the help of a paint brush, transfer the contents of the scrappings onto the drop of water either with the help of the needle or you can take the scrappings with the help of a paint brush. Now take a cover glass and place it over the drop of water containing the scrappings. Now your temporary preparation of the slide is ready. Take it onto a compound microscope. First observe it under low power and look for the spores or the hyphae or to say the reproductive or the vegetative stages of the pathogen. When you observe it under low power, then shift it to high power, look for the details. In the laboratory, we have permanent slides or charts on these pathogens and their life cycle. Compare the preparation with the permanent slide preparations or the charts available in the laboratory. Draw pictures showing the characters of the spores or the hypha of the pathogen. So, we know that white rust disease is a fungal disease in mustard plant and the disease decreases the yields and the symptoms of the disease are on the leaf lower surface you can see white pustules where spores are being present and on the upper surface you can see swellings or galls. And the fungus infection can be controlled by using fungicides as mentioned. Now the next disease we are going to discuss is citrus canker disease. Let us have a look at the citrus plant and the fruit. Any member of citrus it can be a lemon or it can be orange or it can be a mosambi or a grapefruit. All these species are infected by the canker disease it is a bacterial disease and the bacterium is known as xanthomonas and the species is oxonopodis and it infects the aerial portions of the plant body, leaf, stem, fruit and you can see raised brown water soaked margins usually with a yellow halo and old lesions show a carky appearance, canker carky appearance. The damaged sites of the leaf by leaf minor larvae, the name of the insect is Philoctis citrella. So, these larvae feed on the leaf and those sites where the larvae feeds on can also make the chances or enhance the chances of infection. So, not only through the air, but also because of the insect also the disease can spread. How to control it? Integrated pest management is one measure, whereas the other measures are quarantine in the plants, eradication of the infected plants or sanitization of the field equipment with bactericidal chemicals. These are the measures suggested for controlling the disease. As usual, as like other ones, the infection leads to decrease in yield. You can see on the fruit brown spots, they look like cankerous spots. 
The next one is a viral disease in papaya or papita, papaya leaf curl disease. Here are the infected leaves of papaya. As you see, the leaf is stunted in growth, reduced size. It is a vector borne viral disease. The vector is silver leaf white fly. Its name is Bemisia tabasi. The shape of the leaf is distorted. There is a premature leaf fall. And the most important character you see here is rolling of the leaf downwards and inwards. See, it looks like an umbrella. So, rolling of the leaves downwards and inwards in the form of an inverted cup. Clearing and thickening of the veins. Have a look at the veins. The veins are cleared and the veins are thickened. In general, viral diseases show symptoms like mosaic patterns of light and dark colors, necrotic spots. Wherever the virus grows, the spot becomes red or necrotic or brown spots. Or the other one is curling of the leaf as you have seen in case of papita or papaya or chlorosis, yellowing of the leaves, rugosiness. Rugose means uneven surface of the leaf as you see in papaya as well as in this chili plant where the leaf lamina is not smooth but it is rugose, uneven. So, these are some of the symptoms of the viral disease. So, the one which you are studying is papaya leaf virus. The remedial or the control measures are removal or burning of the infected plants and also because it is a vector borne disease like with the help of silver leaf white fly, integrated pest management also is suggested. Tomato is another plant which is economically important to us, is also prone to viral diseases. The two important diseases are one is tomato yellow leaf curl viral disease, the other one is tomato leaf curl virus disease. Both the diseases are caused by virus. It is again transmitted or it you know, white flies promote in spread of the disease. The leaf edges die back then twist and curl upwards whereas in case of papaya the leaf curl downwards whereas in case of tomato the leaf edges die back and then twist and then curl upwards. Plants are stunted in growth the leaves are small, the blossoms drop and the yield of the fruit is very low. The remedial measures are integrated pest management, biological control through big eyed bugs or larvae of lace wing or lady beetle to control white flies and also removal and destroy of the infected plants is other measure of remedial. Other disease is smut disease. This again is caused by a fungus. It usually affects grasses like maize, wheat, sugarcane and sorghum. We have taken these four examples because these are economically useful to us. They are food crops, maize, wheat, sugarcane and sorghum. Corn smut is caused by Astilago maidis. Whereas in case of sugarcane, the smut disease is caused by Astilago cytaminia. We have one more example of fungal disease, red rot of sugar cane. This is caused by again a fungus. The name of the fungus is Calitotrichum falcatum. Whenever the fungus infects, the yield decreases because it blocks the vascular elements. Now, let us summarize the diseases. You have learned in this session that pathogens or either they belong to either bacteria, fungi or viruses. The bacterial and fungal diseases can be studied. We can study the pathogen characters, symptoms in the laboratory with the help of a microscope. Whereas, in case of the viral diseases, 
only symptoms can be studied, but not the virus cannot be seen because they are ultra microscopic and we can see only with the help of the electron microscope. And the measures to control the disease spread are sanitation, removal and burning of the infected plants, crop rotation, treatment of the seed, fungicides or bactericides compounds and use of genetically resistant varieties. In addition to these diseases caused by pathogens, sometimes when there are deficiencies of minerals, it also leads to diseases. So, here you are having three examples. One is boron, the other one is iron and third one is molybdenum. Boron is essential for transport of carbohydrates and if boron is not present or not available, the birds die back. Iron deficiency leads to yellowing of the leaves or chlorosis because it is essential for synthesis of chlorophyll. Molybdenum is essential mineral nutrient. It is required for nitrogen metabolism and in its absence, there will, there will be effect on the nitrogen metabolism. An example of the disease symptom is whip tail in cauliflower. Now, with this let us summarize. Plants are prone to infections. The infections are caused either by fungi, bacteria or viruses or in some cases it can be because of mineral deficiency and the mineral deficiency diseases will disappear the moment the mineral which is not present is added to the soil or provided to the plant. Whereas, in case of the diseases caused by pathogens, the pathogens will remain either in the soil or they remain in the residues of the crop. So, as a remedial measure, treatment of the soil, treatment of the seed, crop rotation, use of disease resistant varieties or burning of the removal and burning of the infected plants, these are the remedial measures suggested. Thank you very much.